Well, howdy doody there, folks. This is going to be a crazy week. By crazy week, I mean short week. Got three days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, to get y'all a main video. Uh, Friday, most of that day is going to be preparation for the car show. We got this Saturday, which when this airs, it'll be this past Saturday, the car show. So, we're getting straight into it, and we're doing some accessory type all the little odds and ends, whatever we can think of and get hooked up on this thing, uh, we're gonna do it. You know what, we should probably make a list at some point. Hey, there he is. Uh, I told Bill yesterday, I said, hey, I need to install the harmonic balancer. He's got the installation tool. What'd you tell him, Bill? I he, forgot. <laughs> no. He said, I'll see you at normal time. Bill ain't showed up at the same time once in his life, but he told me normal time, like I know he's here at nine or 9.30, you know? I was like, all right, normal time. Have fun on your ride. I'm done, I'm on my way back in. Bill just hitting them heels, getting it, hooking it. Harmonic balancer installation, stuff with the accessories, exactly what I'm talking about. Now y'all seen I just pulled that radiator, that's cause uh, it was hitting the gearbox. The good old GM 500. I learned a lot about you last week. I learned that on this, it don't clear radiators. Uh, I learned about the splines required to get the proper DD shaft. Do not get one with 36 spline, you better get one with 30 spline. And also, you better get the proper radiator. Now this radiator got rained on last night. We got an hour's worth of rain or so, nothing crazy. So now it has the easy peel open feature. And right here should be, yeah, and there's plenty of foam in this corner uh, because this radiator don't have a corner. Good gracious, that thing's ugly. Luckily, this ugly abomination of a radiator uh, will be down in there. That's the bottom side, obviously. You won't ever see it. Woo! This thing was really affordable, though. I want to say it's like 250 bucks. Uh, we don't have to notch one ourselves. We don't even have the stuff to properly. I don't have the experience to notch one. Whoop. You can see, look, that's wild, guys. Wildly ugly. But if it works and it gets us the clearance uh, we need. Uh, but look at the top tank. This is the part you can see. And visually, this looks much better than the flat aluminum ones, in my opinion. That looks like 85 Camaro. I've got a mullet. I've got a damned old three-quarter can with double hump heads and I'll run your ass for pinks, buddy. That's what that looks like. This has an overall factory looking style to it, which I personally like much better. And it's gonna fit, hallelujah. Now you notice I had another goodie back here. It was a little dirty, so I left it outside to wash it. Oh, no, uh, had a little bare metal right there, so I wanted it to get in the rain where it could get some patina to match the rest of the car. That's what I was doing. 59 to 61 Chevrolet battery tray. It's kind of weird that 61 to 64 on these cars shared a lot of parts and 59 and 60 shared a lot of parts, but 59 to 61 shares a battery tray. Well, that's what the sticker says. As I took a gander in here the other day, uh, I noticed that ours was slightly rusty. And that battery tray, it's kind of like our floor pans. They make it, it should fit fairly easy. It's cheap enough. Uh, there ain't no sense in us rebuilding this when we can bolt one in. These things don't play no games. That's the quarter inch drive. You don't want me to get the half inch drive on it. We need the extendo kit. Love tap. Love, love, love tap. Oh, slick fitty. And the love tap. Oh, that one had a little booty on it. Hey, what do you think of my re uh, my replacement patch panel I built? Are you talking about this? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Easy way to do it. That took three days to build, buddy. To build the courage to spend the money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, watch your toes. Getting slightly distracted here, but Bill showed up with his uh installer but he has it rigged up to be a puller and i said how do you want me to install it with it like that this thing's supposed to spin on here as you install it but we need something that goes in there that'll throw it into our crank so as you turn this it shoves it on and he said well good luck getting that off there oh it's gonna be one of them mornings huh Good old camera always doing the Michael Jackson lane. 
Boy, I'm struggling to reach that one. My, oh my. Looks like they did a pretty good job on reproduction. Let's see how she fits in there. Luckily, our core support's good. Surface rust, but ain't nothing on this core support rusted out at all. Oh yeah, we need to put our bolts in up there, don't forget. Uh-oh. Then pinched our ground wire. What do I got going on here? We better start the bottom bolt on the inside first. Uh, that one there ain't gonna line up with that one started. These all pretty well line up though, so we're gonna have to do a little waller for a dollar right there. Drilled that sucker and used this baby like a end mill and just slotted her all the way over. One, two, three. They get a slight step, not a big one. I bet she'll go in now. Not uncommon with aftermarket stuff, guys. It's part of it. It ain't gonna fit perfect every time. Gotta get our fender washer for the fender well back on. We're gonna clean them threads just a hair. There, right there's my secret for knocking all the undercoating off that. You just let it go in there, it'll beat the dog poop out of it, and then it should come out a nice, clean, new bolt. Perfect. D-U-N, she is done. That is hands down. The easiest rust repair I've ever done did in my whole life. Scrap trailer it goes. Give her hell, cowboy. I believe he would have if that truck was running on more than five cylinders. Since we got the old radiating machine out of here, that gives us a lot of room down here. Uh, I think we're about to pull off our accessories. And it's a good time to throw our uh, harmonic balancer on. But before we do that real quick, uh, y'all know I got to plug my merchandise. It's a large part of my business, www.puddinsfabshop.com. We have crew necks in stock. Uh, we restocked the Mama Didn't Raise No Punk shirts and the Yeehaw. I think we probably still have some of them and then just odds and ends. Y'all see what I found right here though? Who remembers this thing? That is Mount Carbmore. We whipped that baby together during a Will It Run one time. It was on the channel for a long time. A long story short, I found it underneath that table. Uh, I'm gonna give this away to someone. This ain't really a big incentive to drive like a merchandise sales. But I was just thinking, uh, I'm not gonna, don't, so, someone's gonna buy merchandise and we're just gonna put their stuff. Uh, this will be wrapped up in a flat rate box with it and someone's gonna get it. They might not even know they're gonna get it and they might not want it, but they're gonna get it. <laughs> and you can set a Mount Carbmore on your shelf that's ass whipping for days. So I have nothing to do with who, who uh, gets it, whoever's purchase merchandise after this Monday. Uh, I'm just gonna tell Nathan, who's been helping us stay on top of that stuff. Hey, whichever order you feel like, you pick a random one, that's all I'm gonna tell them. Uh, there ain't gonna be no other stipulations other than whichever one Nathan feels like sending it to, he's gonna send it to somebody. Got a little oil of some sort right here. Give her a drip drop and kind of lube this up. Make sure to get her seal wet. Uh, get it where it wants to slide good. Same with this thing. Quick little lube on the inside. Lube up this outside where hopefully whoo, she wants to slide right in. Drop a luby dooby on these threads. We'll, uh, we'll get our adapter together here for our installer. All right, let's go get this started. Then we'll get this started and we'll worry about the rest. Step one, ignore where the paint came off your cheap chrome. Step two, index your balancer towards the key and try to press it on by hand as far as you can. Yeah. Step three, thread in your adapter installer piece. Step four, lubricate them threads. Can't ever go wrong with wet threads, guys. Oh, yeah, she's got little bearing washer type things in there. Step five, that goes on, then this goes on, and that should fit on this. Oh, yeah. Step five and a half. Uh, get that on there and run that sucker down. What step are we on now? Seven? 
And of course, as we tighten that down and it goes that away, it's just gonna shove that onto our crank. Oh yeah, that's gotta be all the way right there. I knew we were getting close because we were running out of room right back there. We're gonna back that off is wanting to spin the engine, so you're not gonna get uh, any tighter unless you you stop the engine somehow, get something on the flex plate, whatever. Uh, I'm assuming that's all we need to do. Then we need to get our bolt in and get it torqued down. Uh, oil on the threads. It'll help you every time. Hopefully we're done with this. Uh, we may need it. What we probably should do, honestly, guys, is mock up everything to the point of like trying to get belts on it where we make sure everything's gonna be lined up because our bottom pulley bolts to that. So if we bolt it all together, then we know everything's good. Then we can put our replacement parts on. Uh, we're gonna have to clean up some brackets and stuff. This stuff ain't the prettiest. These things have been whipped by the ugly stick. Yeah, just like our uh, pulley here. Ugly. I'm guessing that's what these fine thread units were for. Quick mock it. Oh, and this is stripped down. Look at our spacer there, guys. The stud from the factory held on an air conditioning bracket back there. Of course, we're not using that. And uh, that bracket was a quarter inch thick. And I seen that at the hardware store. You go there, they got them little specialty uh, slide out door things. Kind of like these here. And there's one that said steel bushings. And I got to looking in there and they had one for that. Uh, so maybe that'll help you out. If you're having some spacing issues, of course, you can do it with washers. Uh, but obviously that looks better than four washers stacked together. Check your local hardware. They may have just what you need to tidy up your ride. I don't know what happened to the uh, uh, water pump pulley now that I think about it. Hey, that sucker's crunchy. Got our adapter and our push rod for the fuel pump, but no uh, water pump pulley. Hmm, maybe I forgot it out there. Well, let's see if it got left behind. Mm, I'm not seeing it anywhere. I'm trying to look up in the core support and stuff because... Uh, Obviously, I wouldn't just forget it on purpose. I know we need it, but I ain't seeing it. I gathered everything right in here. Yeah, I don't see it underneath there. Camera died. I never did find the pulley. Uh, I did rob one off that four-wheel drive out there. I think it's the same one. But on the drive back home, I thought, what's the chances that I threw that pulley in the back instead of the front? Uh, I threw our wrenches back there, I see. At least we got this one, and I bet our other one will turn up eventually. <laughs> it sure will uh i found it shit the bed fred is under my nose the whole time all right i'm glad we just wasted all that time back to making progress they look like they're lined up pretty good together a redneck mock up here right here in the storage bin we got some more parts a classic charging device she's delco remy reman Go! Or get a hold of it or it'll get a hold of you. Swap our spacer on real quick. It seems a little short. We'll uh we'll shim that if we have to. A little gappage there. <laughs> oh yeah, that's looking good. That's what I want to see. Uh we can't have this on and get our power steering one on, so let's hop to it. Our bracket here, it's slotted down here, so we can use this to adjust uh, whatever. This was slotted as well, just so it can move. But we don't have to have this end slotted. We can make it solid. That belt's too small. I kept the old belt, so uh, I know which one will go on here. Let's see if we can find a park number. Deco 15395. Just talked to the parts house. Uh, they have the belt I need. It should be coming along with the power steering pump puller because I ain't got one of them. So once we get the proper belt, we'll pull that sucker tight. Since we're waiting on that, uh, I'm going to pull this manifold off. I'd kind of mocked it up. That's a factory one. Mock up's the best thing to do, guys, because then you know you're good. You don't mock up, you get everything painted and nice. Then you start taking it on and off, on and off. Got to modify this or do that. And then you scratched up all the work you just did cleaning it up. these we ain't really gonna have to mock these up i don't see no reason we can't install it for good uh, before we do that we're gonna go ahead and uh 
put our spark plugs in to them. That way it's a done deal. For a spark plug, we're just gonna slap some basic AC Delcos in her. I messed with you Ford guys and put AC Delcos in the Ford in the E-Haul. I should have messed with you Chevy guys and put some motorcraft in this thing. <laughs> but the Chevy guys lose their minds. I set these to 45 thousandths. Uh, that's just kind of, I don't know, I think what a lot of people's running on stuff with the HEI. That's what these actually came gap. So far I've just checked four of them and they're perfect. You always wanna check your spark plugs, guys. Uh, sometimes these things, you wouldn't think, but even in the box of slamming around, those tips will get bent down, it'll be closed. Or maybe quality control just had a bad day one day. You never know. It looks like all eight of these were dead on the money. They get me a little belt. Oh, don't break. Get me a little holster to holster these babies on my hip, then I can whoosh, get ready to install them quick. Then I'll just throw them in that pocket. How's that? I hate doing spark plugs. I thought they're hard. For some reason, I'm just always like terrified I'm gonna just strip these things. Cross thread them, whatever, you know what I mean? Now don't forget, we got some steering to sort out up here too. <sighs> Know what? I noticed on our front porch there's a big box. Maybe my carburetor machine is here. Yeah. Motor mounts and spark plugs, good to go. I'm curious if any of y'all got experience with these. With these bad mamma jammas right here, guys. I kind of wanted the ram, uh, ram horn style. Uh, I just like these things. Now this one, it's got the ceramic coat, I think. Fairly affordable, couple hundred bucks from Summit. They got here quick, uh, and uh, I just don't know how they're gonna hold up, but we're gonna find out on this thing. I think these are gonna look pretty dang good on here. I do notice that our brake line is gonna kind of be close to our exhaust down there so we may have to build just like a little heat shield or something not right now but on down the road we may have to keep an eye on that run them down with the machine but check torque with hand check that engine with your eye because oh baby those look good. The valve covers being on there is really going to help it look better too. Oh baby, she looks even better with two of them on there. Are y'all feeling frisky? Do you want to get frisky? You're never in a million years going to convince me that flimsy chrome looks better than that. All right, before we pop those on though, we got to put our little, I don't know, I call them a baffle, whatever you call that down in here. Keep that oil from splashing up there a lot. That sucker goes in there so good, I doubt that could ever come out, but uh, giving it a little bit of red on there anyhow. She snug down good. I'm fairly certain we just bolted on a grand total between the pair of about 100 horsepower. Now those are fancy Allen head bolts, so they require a fancy tool. Okay, uh, Allen wrench taped into a little socket I've had. Looking slick. Sometimes you need even more special tooling because the special tooling you got ain't special enough. And hey yo, that was just about perfect timing. Got all that stuff on and our, our belt showed up. So here's the belt we need. Pray on her for some good tension. Check her belt. Yep. I think we're sitting pretty good right there. Now we gotta figure out something from here to here. Or from here up to here. We gotta do something. 
Hmm, let's have a little look see in the scrap cabinet here. Now this is not big enough, but I'm thinking about using round rod. Basically mount a tab up either off the front of the head or off the exhaust bolt would be fine too. And just run something down to the existing bracket that's there, weld it in there, and then we'll take all that bracket or power steering pump off. We can trim up that old bracket and make it flow and look better. Uh, you'll kind of see what I'm talking about as we get going. Don't have to look factory, but it can't look redneck. We could make that work, I think. First, we're gonna waller this hole out. Nothing crazy, just a little bit of slack since that is adjustable. I'm gonna like this. We just gotta have a little stabilization, guys. Nothing crazy. Now, if we could lay something here, bend it that way, bend it up. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Woo! It's a thicken. Let's see if we can use the vise and the motivator over here and put some manipulation in this half inch round rod situation. Looks like a good way to knock the crap out of your hip bone. Oh, or slip and hit the stomach. I don't want to hit them ab muscles, I'd probably break my hammer. Got about a 45. Of course, we'll end up trimming that tab down and making that flow. Honestly, as long as right there, we break it and go that away, we should be good. Should be able to cut it about right here. That's just a little educated guesstimation on how much to bend that. I mean, that's pretty damn good fit if you ask me. Position that sucker where you want it and tack her on. By tack it, I'm in a quick weld, uh, never hurt nothing. <laughs> Got this tab trimmed down. This one, uh, I think we'll be better off to go ahead and break this down and get this off here. Then we can finish cleaning that one up. Got the pulley puller right here, so let's pull it. It's like our sleeve don't hold it to get uh, tight enough together or something. Right here, I've got an adjustable sleeve. Better get it right the first time because it only adjusts once. There we go. No fancy kit needed, just get your worm clamp. And now we can finish making that a little prettier. Get down, do that, do that. Get down, do that, do that. All right, what do y'all think? Do you like that better or not? Boy, I sure do. Uh, let's get this thing cleaned up. Should be ready for some paint. Yep, I almost forgot to clean its dirty hole. blow this off it'll be ready for the paint booth too i just figured we uh we'd paint all the power steering stuff at once
It's all in the technique, guys. Everyone knows when you put that leg back at a 35, you get a better spray pattern. Yeah, starting this morning with a little stripping action. Put and tying to the main stage. This factory air conditioning crap, uh, we ain't gonna use any of it. We might as well get it out of our way. She's pretty ugly. We're just gonna cut it back there and shove those hoses back there and act like it, like it never even happened. An old Big Bertha. Yeah, once we cut them like that, we can reach back in there and kind of cut them flush with that. Now, if you know to look for them, you'll see them, but most people won't. That looks a lot better. We are going to have to replace our heater hoses, obviously, but that gets these suckers out of here. We won't be able to time travel anymore since we took off the flux capacitor, but other than that, at least it'll look better. Ah. I threw it short, I, I, I got mid air, you know, I was in the air for 10 seconds and I, I just pictured me nailing the tow roll and I got scared. Oh, dribble, dribble. Oh. Sports are stupid. Now yesterday before I went in, y'all see me clean up a couple parts. Guys, if you've done this, you know how long it takes to clean up all this crap and get it ready for some paint. I got all of it taken care of except for this pulley. I forgot it, so I'm taking care of it this morning. I've heard people say the last 10% takes 90% of the time. I've heard it as the 80-20. Instead, the last 20% takes 80% of the time. And yes, very time consuming to get all this crap ready. I got the power steering pump on order. There's three to choose from for that car. And uh, one of them, two of them look the exact same other than that shaft is offset to the one side some so you really got to get it apart so you can see which one you need to order if not you'll have the incorrect one which is what we have right here so when our pump gets here at noon uh, i think we'll be able to get all the accessories on uh and then after that we'd be able to put the radiator in but before we put the radiator in uh we've we've got a transmission and it needs to stay cool so we've got a cooler right here that we need to get mounted it's extremely similar to the big one i ran on my truck and travel all our job is to get this thing mounted on the front side here and before i forget we're gonna go ahead and get our bolt in here oh that's tight yeah core support good to go there we go i knew i had to go in there somehow mount that we need to get this sorted because we don't want to mount it where it's going to interfere with this obviously them threads are crunchy all that will line up and then this will come in at the bottom side we're definitely gonna have to get some more bolts. I got a couple, that'll be good enough for mock up. Can't bolt it on for good? Hell, mock it up. So let's see what I can figure out here. <laughs> it fits better if we turn it sideways, but if we face it down, we ain't got room for the if we flip it upside down then we'd be forcing fluid in and then forcing it up and out and i don't really like the idea of it being flipped over so we got to go back to my sideways plane and to drop it down in there looks like the first thing we need to do is cut off this bracket here because it's hitting our lower valence now i can kind of eagle eye we need to build some little l brackets to come off the first one a quarter inch this one over here probably about three quarter inch just something that goes back and breaks over very professional
Woo, UPS is here, more parts. Come on, more parts. That should be perfect. There's one. There's two. These things are pretty close to the same. This one's just slightly longer. I think we may, how are we gonna do this? Maybe we'll drill us a couple holes on here to be able to spot weld through. Y'all know me, I'm just firing from the hip, baby. Just wanging it and danging it. Hitting it with the wang dangle. Something like that's the goal. A little nut cert action and uh, this one's ready for mock up. Flatten our smaller one out. We're gonna move our brake further this way. Eagle Eye didn't calculate enough offset to kind of straighten that thing up like we need. This should get us closer. Yeah, that's a little better. This is slanting back that away, so that's why those need offset, where it's actually sitting in here straight. Kind of hard to show, but basically I'm about to uh, sand that down to some bare metal, and then we're gonna spot weld it through the top hole. So if we have a little look-see here, uh, that bottom bracket made out some thicker stuff. I did weld that bolt to there, and what I'm hoping is, now with that being a stud, we can undo the nut back there, you undo these two bolts, and hopefully this thing would pull out of there. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You definitely don't wanna have to be trying to unbolt that and rebolt that when the bumper's on, it'd almost be impossible. Next, we'll pop our adapters on. I think these just thread on. That's all it takes. It's gonna seep down there and seal up. And we're just gonna use uh, AN lines or fittings, whatever, to build our cooler lines. <clears throat> torque them with the Pot County Speed Wrench. Now we can go torque this on the wagon. I ain't so worried about building the lines right now. Uh, they should just swoop right through that hole right there. Before we start putting all this in here, our fuel pump's super easy to get to right now. It'd be a great time to take care of it. It'd also be a great time to get this old cable off my pretty manifolds. Don't start no crap, there won't be no crap. Got our plate painted yesterday, it's here ready to go. The push rod thingy is not ready to go. Uh, she's gonna get spit shined a little bit. Hit it with the classic scrape and polish. Lube her up. Stick her in. I put it dirty side down because that's how it used to be. Now I'm usually not an RTV guy. I'd prefer a gasket, but I didn't have a gasket. And I didn't feel like building a gasket. So this one gets a little RTV. Next goes the fuel pump. Oh, not without a gasket. And also you want to make sure that rod's up, which it is, because you got to get that little arm underneath it. Yep. Don't forget the little guys. Mm. 
Yeah. Sun's out, gun's out. I don't know how the heck I still had that hoodie on. I was about to burst into flames. One, two, three, four, five. Coming down. Freaking money. We got a latching hood, guys. That's lined up just beautifully. What's this wire for, the horn? We ain't got no horn currently. Hey, that's lining up like it's meant to be. We ain't gonna worry about rubbing no more. Ain't no chance in hell there's three foot in between here now. I can squeeze my fist in there. They could surely come up with something better than whatever the old 1800s boiler design we got going on here. Clearing's clear and I ain't complaining. Can't see that ugly notch from here anyhow. Woo! Top of that so pretty. We're doing good. Let's throw our pulley on and then we gotta get our center bolt in on the uh, 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 crankshaft. Even our pulley gets shiny new bolts. Oh yeah, now right here in the old battery tray, I've had this old hog molly waiting on us. Of course, she goes right in the middle. That bolt's very important. You want to ensure that it is properly torqued. Torqued. Oh, oh, careful. Where'd the gasket go? I lost the gasket. I stored it where I'd stored that pulley the other day. You just keep it underneath the car, you know. Gotta have the orange water pump. Proper power steering pump is in. Does that look pretty or what? Beautiful. It looks beautiful. I did scotch bright the center to get some of our overspray out of there. That's it right there. Once you stop, you're done, guys. There ain't no sense in torquing the dog piss out of it because you'll be pressing against the shaft of the pump. You won't be doing no good. Oh, hey, that line's right up. Almost like it was built for this. What do y'all, uh, looks like I should have put that one hose on uh, before we mounted that, that's okay. What do y'all think about my bracket? Do you like it? Now you better be ready, cause just cause you got a new power steering pump, I don't know, I just felt like kicking as I was walking guys. Uh, power steering pump, don't mean you get a new cap, and ours is um, dirty. How buck nasty you want to get with this? I'll get buck nasty. I mean, it did come with a new lid. Here's our new lid. That sucker looks good. Can't be mad at that right there. The more this goes together, the better it looks. Well, that ain't good. I just tried to pop our pulley on and the pulley is hitting our belt. I'm a damn idiot. Uh, probably because this goes a step back. I'm sitting there trying to figure out why it's rubbing. <laughs> it clears. Magic. Yep. Gonna need a bigger washer than that. Slap a thicken on there and we'll be good. Mm-hmm. Now one box here, uh, it had our fan in it and this fan I just found online. I don't even remember what it's supposed to fit or what it was advertised for. Uh, I just looked for something that was the right diameter I thought I needed. Derail, derail, however you say that, uh, good brand. 
It showed up in this box with this on the cover and I about shit myself. Mortsky don't like flexi hoses. I don't like flexi fans. If we're gonna run a flexi fan, we might as well get a flexi hose, get the paint off them chrome valve covers, slap the old aluminum job back in, cause uh, that baby's gonna be high performance. Luckily it looked like this, which is kinda a factory-ish looking fan. Made in USA, you don't see that very often. It tells you your rotation, face her forward like that. I know we could put a clutch on this. I don't plan on putting a clutch on it. I'm curious if we can get the factory fan shroud on this thing and how all that would align and work. We may be pulling the radiator back out. No, oh, that ain't as wide as I thought it was. It's still wide. Oh yeah, I forgot. These go where the radiator bolts go anyhow. So either way, the bolts are coming back out of that thing. Maybe we need to flip this over. Yeah, that's how it goes. All this stuff is kind of looking like it was meant to be, which is weird because this car come with the short water pump from the factory and obviously we got the long on there. But take off the uh, 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 clutch and that fan right there sitting right about where we want it perfectly. All right, torqued all those right back in. So fans, if possible, you actually want the blades kind of sitting about halfway on your shroud and that's exactly where these ones are. So that fan's in perfect position. Some call it luck. Hey, when you're good, you're good. Well, booger. It's tightening the fan down and then I notice our shroud's rubbing our uh, notch tank thingy down there. We do not want that rubbing through, so uh, we're gonna have to mark where it's hitting and then pull all this back apart and notch the shroud. Fans on. We're notched and clearing, that's good. And she's almost starting to look like something. Holy crap, I hate doing stuff like that, guys. Uh, probably what I spent close to a couple hours. <laughs> that thing was pretty rusty and getting it strip, stripped down. It's a lot of work. I don't have two hours to spend on it, but at the same time, when I first put it in there yesterday, I didn't like it. I was like, I'll probably live with it. Then I was editing this morning, getting all the editing caught up, and I seen it on video, and I was like, yep, uh, I gotta paint that thing. If I don't paint this thing, the internet's gonna think I'm a punk, cause I said, oh no, I'll just leave it. Joke's on you, internet. Mama didn't raise no punk. Man, this primer lays down so good. Uh, it's not cheap, but it lays down like real deal primer. And since that piece ain't perfect, uh, this primer will kind of clean up some of the roughness, actually. It'll fill in some spots and everything else. Uh, this should have us looking good. For all I know, it could be looking bad, because I can't see anything without my damn glasses on. Hmm. Nope, she still looks good. Wow, that's coming out good. Did you have that thing blasted? Oh, yeah, I blasted it with a wire wheel. Really? A little little Rolock disc. Took up a good huh. two, two hours of my time. <laughs> Came out pretty good. Looks like it's been blasted. You already know, if Bill approves, it's good. If that sets up like that, we'll be real good. Oh shit, that UPS truck don't mess around, man. Huh? I said, that UPS truck don't mess around. Sounds like a hot rod coming down the road. Man, if they wanted to shoot a commercial, they need to get a hold of her. Let her finish drying, but that old paint laid down pretty good on this thing. As it dries, I think we're gonna mess with our tranny next. 
We're gonna mess with our tranny parts. I mean, that, <laughs> that don't sound better. I'm gonna wiggle on that tranny part. We are going to mess with some of the items I received through the mail for the transmission of our vehicle. How's that sound? I drove by and seen Puddin out there tugging on his tranny parts. Transmission cable adapter for the GM 700R4 or 200R4. Right here we got the Elderbrock 1405. That should be a 600 CFM a manual choke. And right here we got our TV cable that'll hook up. No, that is not a kick down cable. If you treat this like a regular old kick down cable, like it ain't important, you'll know it because your transmission's gonna be burned up. Now, I know some people don't like these carburetors. Uh, I've had really good luck of taking them out the box, putting them on a vehicle, and just driving them. Oh yeah, good old fashioned manual choke setup. Guys, I just prefer it myself. Some of y'all are loyal to your brands. I don't know if y'all can tell. I've got Hollies on some things, Motorcrafts on other things. Uh, I like the factory Rochester two barrels. Uh, you know, Elder Brock. I guess it just depends on which one's gonna work for what you're doing. And that appears to sit right there. That tab's gonna interlock it. Ooh, lock her down. That is what this is gonna end up clicking onto, and that's gonna control our transmission on a 700R4. This controls everything, the amount of like fluids flow and uh, shift and all kinds of important stuff. So if this is not set up properly, you're gonna have trouble. So if you don't have a carburetor that they sell the little kit for, do some research. Uh, you can find the geometry if you dig deep enough and you gotta build something off of your main shaft that comes down about an inch and a tenth. Then it goes back. I think you gotta have it at like 78 degrees if I remember right. There, there's some mathification involved. I've built my own brackets on the two barrel Rochesters and never had a problem. Stuff that never come with them don't have a problem. But if you talk to people who like to set them up incorrectly, worst transmissions ever built. I put 10 of them in one truck. They kept burning up. Am I supposed to hook up this cable? You gotta hook it up right. It does make a difference. Now, I'm not saying they don't have their weak points, uh, but I personally know a guy who complain every time I buy one, it's got a burn, in, burn up transmission. I put it in there, it don't even last 500 miles. Claimed he's had like 10 of them. Guess what, buddy? You're the problem. <laughs> there ain't no way in hell that many rebuilt transmissions are bad. I'm sorry, it just ain't happening. Being a popular carburetor, of course we can buy the kit from them to set it up for us. We're gonna be able to bolt this sucker down with eight bolts if we want. Uh-huh, and apparently we should have painted all the top of that because that's gonna look dumb. Don't mind that professional uh, back mask job. A couple coats of orange and we should be fixed up. Between that and that fan shroud, old rattle can Dan's just working wonders. I would say this morning, but it's damn near one o'clock. Been working for four hours. I got two things rattle canned, making solid progress. Oh, that looks way more better. And now that sucker just flows like Eddie Vedder. Free I'm a just put a bolt in it type of guy. I'm the only stud allowed around here, right? Just snug them by finger. And next I'm gonna install the shroud for the twelfth time in two days. Oh, pulling that off there was definitely worth it. That looks so much better with that thing being new because you got new, new. We had rusty and crusty, but now it's new. And all that newness going on. Uh, of course, all that's still rusty and crusty, but it looks fine. This being here in the middle just helps it flow and look better. Pretty pumped with how that's turning out. So with our carburetor set on, carburetor machine, uh, and that together, let's finally get this thing jacked up. And we're actually going to go underneath it and get that into the cable end on the or in on the transmission side. Then we'll look at doing the top side. Bust out the Cine Creeper. That thing's like a centipede of cardboard that just going to give us the perfect place to lay. I'm going to just roughly fish that down uh, from up here because this is the direction it'll go. In fact, we'll just hook that on there so it don't uh, fall down. That's using our noggin. 
See that little thing looks like a wire, that little hook? Well, we gotta hook that on the hook. It helps when you have a cable that's actually for 700 R4. Uh, I figured out how to get my hand wiggled in there. Went to press that in there. Uh, yeah, that is not the correct end. This is for like your turbo 350s. So I got the, what I believe to be correct one coming. Uh, our drive shaft is gonna be something we're waiting on if we don't start handling that. So I just brought this in here and our front shaft is gonna have to be short and this one has to be rebuilt. It's bent, rusty, crusty. Everything back there is probably unusable. I just talked to my drive shaft shop. They said as long as everything's good kind of right here, they'll take care of the rest. Also, I said, well, you know, what do you guys think as far as measuring this thing? Because trying to break this down and mock up, get a measurement, whatever. They said as long as I get them a measurement on the car that goes from the sale of the transmission to the front bolt hole of where our carrier bearing's supposed to bolt in, as long as they got that measurement, they know what to do. They'll take care of the rest. Looks to me like 20 and 7 eighths. Brought these guys a love note, uh, giving them all the details they could possibly need. O'Reilly's, my local O'Reilly's. They're good people, guys. Uh, they told me, I was talking to my, my lady, and she said, uh, if I ever need a drive shaft taken up there again, because it's like an hour long drive, she said they go by there all the time. They take drive shafts there. So I'm gonna send this with them and hopefully uh, they'll get it up there probably quicker than I can. There goes the drive shaft. I'm gonna tell you guys right now, you do not want to leave this seal on here and then try to force that down in there. Press your seal down in there, put some looby dooby on this end, then put it down in there. It'll go much easier. <laughs> oh, little little adjusting action there huh it helps when you got the correct cable this truck's supposed to have 700 r4 in it now i thought we had a bracket in the scrap cabinet uh i thought i had one i was gonna cut it up and make it work but apparently at some point i consumed it shit the bed mm -hmm. we'll look inside just in case would be this here and that's held on to that oh no right back there that's that's what we'd be after <sighs> slowly but surely as long as we get that bolt out we'll have it All right, what an ugly bracket. Oh, little surprise, that sucker's dimple died. This piece right here is the main thing we're after, so we're gonna trim this off. We'll probably trim some of this off and then see where we're at over there. Now our goal is to get a clean little bracket. Now that end is adjustable, uh, but what we're gonna wanna do is knock this carburetor at wide open throttle with that held, we're gonna pull back on the TV cable so it's full extended. That way that thing's giving her all she's got. And wherever that stops is where we're gonna end up needing this mounted. Wide open throttle and pull this sucker as tight as it'll go about right in there. So pretty much right here at the back of this uh, little dip. Yep. Hmm. And just like that tab, I got another here, but I'd cut this one out of some thicker stuff. Look at that color, guys. It's like they're supposed to be best friends. Snug that. Yeah, it could still come up a hair. Probably a quarter inch. We could space that on the bottom side underneath here. No one would ever know. A little sneaky sneaky. All right, there's damn near perfect, guys. couple tacks will hold on our spacer making it permanent i don't want to be doing no welding over our pretty engine so with all this bare metal i'm hoping we can line it up and make some reference marks with our marker then we'll bring it back over here again tack it take it there if it's good bring it back if it ain't 
good, bring it back, back and forth till we get it right. All my marks line up just like that. I was confident enough I went for two tacks. Ooh, she's looking good. So with this located, uh, next we need to look at stabilizing it and then making it pretty. Uh, we could tighten that really good and we probably wouldn't have a problem. But if we can get another bolt in it and then we know it can't spin, that'd make me feel even better. Get out of here, metal. Eighth inch tit, an eighth inch tit. <laughs> Three quarter inch wide, eighth inch thick. I didn't want to, but we gotta do what we gotta do. I did shove my leather glove underneath it. Oh, had me stretching like I don't stretch. All right, it's located. It is ugly. So we need to weld it, make it solid and not ugly. On a bracket like this, we ain't going to get too picky because once you put some black paint on this, bolt it on, that cable goes in there, you start running plug wire stuff like that, this little guy's going to disappear. We may have kept the dimple die. <laughs> outside of course i lost our short bolt uh that goes in there so we'll get one free it ain't too worried about it pop that in there and that on there d-u-n she's done we'll figure out where the cable goes after we get her throttle and distributor and all that but that right there i'm very happy with in fact the way all this is coming out i'm very happy with i've been wanting to see it outside uh i'm not disappointed but well, other than the fact it's longer than a monday so it's still in the shop technically but other than that, seeing it outside, I'm not disappointed. Probably not as good for y'all as it is me. Was it good for you? Because <laughs> y'all see the shadows and stuff, and of course that messes with the video and everything else. But this thing looks tough. And underneath the hood looks tough. Or it's getting there anyhow. So I'm about to blow the dust off that thing, do a little cleaning in here. In fact, that's how I got distracted. I uh, started purging everything on this wall, started pulling stuff to go to the shed parts I don't need that's just sitting in my way. I am, without a doubt, out of time. I don't even have time to clean, but I've got to do it now because I'm going. Uh, guys, we, we made some solid progress. If we didn't have the car show going on this weekend, I would still have Friday and Saturday to finish up loose ends on that. We'd maybe, yeah, we could probably have it close to firing up, if not fired up. That's gonna have to wait though, because we ain't got the time. Car show video will be on the second channel next week. We're close on the wagon, but it may not be our main channel video next week. We'll see. I've got another idea cooking. We'll just see what happens. Merchandise available at puddinsfabshop.com. I'm on the Instagrammer. I'm on the Patreon. Y'all can tell I'm stressing. Uh, yeah, I will see you guys next time. But do not forget. I almost said do not remember. <laughs> do not remember. Sitting on your ass won't finish your project, except on Tuesdays. <laughs>